Hi, it's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. So today we're gonna to talk about uh, creating layouts and filters for your schedule. So maybe you're at a point where you wanna print some stuff off and you want it to look nice. So let's talk about how to do that. So I have my schedule open here and you know I have all of these columns here that maybe I don't wanna include in my, in my layout. So all I have to do is I, to get rid of those columns and modify them, I just right click here on the table and I go to columns. And then I can, here's all of the available options that I have of adding new columns here. So I have like dates, costs, um, codes, stuff like that. But in this case, I just wanna take some stuff out. So maybe I just want ID, name, duration. Um, let's get rid of remaining duration. So just double click it and then it puts it back in uh, the available options list. Let's get rid of resources and budgeted total cost. So let's just keep it like that. And now we're, we're, we have these columns selected. So let's clean it up a little bit. Let's expand our, our activity name so that everything is visible. Maybe we'll shrink our, our start and finish dates. Uh, and let's create like a longest, let's filter for the longest path. Maybe we just want, this is right now, this is showing all of our activities on the project, but really what I wanna see is what's, the, what's our longest path on the project. So if I go up here to filter by, I just click that. And right now you can see I'm filtered for all activities. And so um, P6 has some default filters in here. So longest path is one of them. And I can just apply that, click okay. Here is my longest path. Um, so say I wanna print this off as a PDF. So if I go up here to print preview, I can see what that looks like. Uh, looks kind of messy. You know, the the, uh, the Gantt chart's not showing fully. This up here says classic schedule layout. Maybe I want that to say longest path. Um, down here, maybe I wanna add a logo or something like that. So what I can do is go to page setup Let's first add my logo down here. So under footer, um, you can see this bottom is broken up into three different sections. So that says divide into three. So if I wanted, I could do two sections and it looks like that. Let's keep it as three sections though. Um, and then the height of this is 0.5. So it's kind of low, there's some space here. Maybe I, want, I can take that up. Let's go to 0.75, click apply. So that grows that space a little more. So here I have my, my legend on the left-hand side. So if I click that, uh, you know, you, you can, it has a drop down, so you can choose uh, something else if you wanted to be on the left-hand side. Here's my middle section, which is the page number. And then on my right-hand side, I have text logo. So let's go ahead and let's modify that. Let's get rid of these guys, delete that. Here I can choose uh, an image. So picture source, I'm gonna browse for it. And I have my image here. I'm gonna open that. And there is my logo. All right, cool. So I got my logo added there. And, uh, and then at the top, I wanna change this, this here to uh, say longest path. And so let's go ahead and let's uh, click on header. It's also broken up into three sections. So I'm gonna click on the middle section. Right now it's layout name, let's change that. And we'll just say longest path. All right, maybe I, want, maybe I want that to be a little bit bigger text. So let's highlight that, take it to 12 and maybe do a bold, going crazy here. And you can see here that it's not showing up and that's because the text size is too large and this, um, this height isn't large enough. So maybe we'll just increase the height to uh, 0.5. And so there, there is our longest path. And the other issue that I'm running into is that I can't see all of the bars over here on my Gantt chart. So let's fix that. Let's go back to our page setup. Let's go to options. And our time scale start is at August 20th, 2021, which is just fine. Our time scale finish though ends at uh, June 6, 2024 which is way past this date, but it's obviously not being shown. So something's, something's wrong here. So if we go back to our page and it says scaling, fit to um, zero pages wide, zero tall. So I wanna select fit time scale to one page wide and that'll fix that. 
So now we see I have everything is is here. Um, and maybe this is a little bit too shrunk and I and I don't need this much white space over here on the right hand side. So maybe I can change this instead to June. You know, one thing I like to do is uh, there's this option that P6 has where you can say P, uh, PS, PF, all of these acronyms. Uh, you can say like project finish. So if I just put PF there for project finish, then it'll scale it to the last date in uh, in in my schedule. Or I could say PF and I can say plus three months, 3M. So then it adds uh, project finish plus three months. Or I could say three days, 3D. Or I could say project finish plus three years, 3Y. So just know that like that's that's how you can, instead of choosing a specific date every time. So I, I typically like to do like project finish plus three months, gives me a little bit of space. So that is looking a lot better. So we obviously worked really hard on this layout. And what I don't want to have happen is uh, is that I, I, you know, start making changes to the columns and stuff like that. And then one day in the future, I want to reference this layout again. And uh, and I don't want to have to rebuild it from scratch because that was a lot of work. So uh, P6 has layouts built into it. And so you can reference, you know, you, the formatting that you previously had and, and kind of takes a snapshot in time and, and you can revert back to that layout, which is going to have the columns, the print, you know, the print settings, all of that stuff, the filters that you had, it's all going to be captured in that one layout. So what we can do is we can go to view layouts and I can save this layout to, uh, I'll, I'll do it to a current user. And maybe I'll just call this one PJMSS Longest Path. All right. So let's go ahead and save that layout. And then now I can start making other changes. So let's go ahead and let's do like an all activities layout. Apply that. Go to our print preview here. This says Longest Path. Let's go ahead. Let's change this instead to uh, all activities. Okay. Let's apply that. All right, so now we have all activities and our scaling looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's save this layout now. Save this one instead of longest path. Let's call this one overall schedule. So now um, instead of, so if now if I wanted to revert back to my longest path layout, I simply go to layout, open layout. And then under the users here, I see I have these two layouts that I've added. So now I can do longest path, which takes me back to that filter, or I can do my overall schedule, which takes me to the newest one that I've created. Let's create one more. And cause I wanted to show you um, how like the groupings, the uh, in, in P6 work. So right now it's just our standard WBS. You know, in, in a previous lesson, we talked about the WBS and built our WBS out. And um, so now we have, you know, that this is our standard kind of buckets uh, as you will, but say I wanted to group it by like the subcontractor. So I wanted, you know, my concrete subcontractor to go first and then our, you know, steel subcontractor. And I wanted to see all of their work. So if I go to group and sort, r right now we're grouped by WBS. I, I added a code for a subcontractor and assigned all of my, um, my codes to the activity. So let's do, let's group it by subcontractor and apply that and see what that looks like. And I see here, I have ABC concrete. Here's all of their work. Here's DE roofing. Here is, uh, you know, the, the steel guy. And right now I'm sorted by activity ID. So it just goes in ascending order. Maybe I want to do it by start date. And so now I have, here's the D, DE roofing again. Uh, here's FG steel. Here's the earthwork sub. Maybe I want to go a little further than that. And I want to show the WBS underneath the subcontractor. So let's go back to our group and sort. And right now it says that this is to all levels. And uh, basically, because in your activity codes, you can have like parent and child relationships. And so 
um, let's just do level one. And then that allows me to add more, more items underneath the subcontractor. So let's click on the one beneath it and do WBS. And let's indent those. And we'll do hide if empty on the WBS. I want, I want to, you can, and you can select hide if empty on any of the ones as you're, as you're going down. So let's apply that and see what that looks like. So now we have our subcontractors and we have underneath our WBS sections here. So we have, you know, building one and two. Um, so, you know, it just gives you, there, there's an endless, you know, amount of options for being able to group and sort and filter. But um, hopefully that just gives you a, a quick idea of, of how the mechanics of the software go. If you have a more specific filter that you're, you know, having a question on um, and you want to know how to do it, just, just leave a comment below. I'd be happy to, happy to show you. So, all right, have a good one. Bye.